afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Armstrong. I'm a research scientist and software developer at uh, Quantumall, and I'm going to be talking about some recent extensions to the Quantumall electron collisions software uh, for electron molecule scattering to handle uh, isotopes and also heavy elements. So as a brief introduction to uh, QEC, uh, QEC is software which calculates cross-sections for electron molecule collisions, so electron impact processes. Uh, it interfaces with two main codes. Firstly, the MOLPRO quantum chemistry package, uh, which provides molecular tar target uh, orbitals for the description of the target molecule, and also the molecular R matrix code, UK R matrix. for the electron impact processes. Uh, uh, the calculations uh, are set up using a, a user-friendly GUI interface. That's the advantage of Quick. It brings in both these codes and sort of wraps them in a user-friendly GUI interface for setting up the various parameters needed for the calculations. So what does Quick ultimately do? It calculates cross-sections and rates for a variety of electron impact collision processes, including elastic scattering and momentum transfer. It also does excitation processes, electronic, rotational, vibrational excitation. It also provides estimates for uh, dissociative electron attachment cross-sections. And the binary encounter beta method is also implemented for calculating electron impact ionization cross-sections. So just a brief overview of uh, our matrix theory. Uh, so uh, the R matrix method, uh, as many of you know, divides space into several regions, inner, outer, and asymptotic. The inner region uh, is there to confine the N electron target molecule. So I've depicted it here with this red sphere, which is the inner region, the target molecule uh, encapsulated within it, uh, and the uh, electron impact process occurs. Uh, the outer region, then, is the region in which a single electron is assumed to be outgoing following the collision. And uh, the choice of this uh, inner region boundary um, has to be made such that in the outer region it's valid to uh, neglect exchange and correlation with inner electrons. And then subsequently, uh, the single outgoing electron wave function in the outer region is propagated to large distances. And at large distances, it's connected with known asymptotic forms. From the, that connection, you can determine phase shifts, S and K matrices, and ultimately uh, the cross sections. So just briefly through some of the inner region theory. In the inner region, you're solving N plus one electron Schrodinger equation, N electrons of the target and the scattering electron. And you use this wave function expansion, which is given in terms of the coordinates of n plus one electrons. These x's are position vectors for electrons one through n plus one. The main thing to take from this big expression are these functions phi i n. These are the target wave functions, which govern the positions of n electrons. Um, and for this talk, these are sort of the essential things. These are provided by um, using MOPRO basis sets and orbitals. So in the outer region, then, exchange and correlation are neglected, and you're solving for a single outgoing electron wave function. So the n plus 1 electron wave function is expanded in this form, where you have uh, a radio wave function for electron n plus 1 to solve for, and then this basis set handles essentially everything else. At large distances, then, uh, our n plus 1 typically 100, um, these solutions uh, FP, the radio wave functions, are connected to asymptotic forms from which you calculate in particular K and T matrices, uh, which are then used to construct cross sections. So that's the background theory. What's new actually in Quick that uses all these methods? Uh, the main thing uh, is, uh, or one of the first thing is uh, isotope selection. Previously, the, obviously, the most abundant isotope was uh, what was assumed when entering any uh, atom of choice. But an isotope library is now available for all elements that the user uh, can choose. And this is important, uh, particularly in ast astrophysical applications, where there are differences, say, between the major isotope terrestrially versus the one which is major astronomically. And a case in point is uh, argon H+. Plus. Um, for which argon-40 is terrestrially dominant, but astronomically it's argon-36. And so you can carry out uh, calculations now for 
any of the argon isotopes. There is also argon-38, which is not so abundant. But uh, Quirk can calculate uh, dipole moments for all of these uh, isotopes, argon H+. Plus. They do differ slightly, and they're in line with uh, values in NIST. And it's not just these. You can calculate as a demonstration. Uh, I've calculated rotational excitation coefficients for both um, uh, isotopes uh, just as easily. Um, Quirk can do. There's no difference in Quirk calculation for these two isotopes. That is a new facility. The other new facility is the use of uh, new Mulpro basis sets for heavy elements. Heavy in this context, what I mean is uh, containing elements between argon and krypton. Uh, I don't want to go beyond krypton because I want to consider all electron basis sets <coughs> potentials. Um, once you get beyond krypton, you're almost certainly into the use of core potentials or relativistic basis sets and that's an entirely different ballgame. So I'm going to restrict it to argon to krypton for this talk. Now, the most common basis sets usually people use are the Dunning and Popel, people are familiar with. Um, the issue once you get beyond argon is that Popel basis sets are only available for hydrogen through argon and molpro. Dunning are still available beyond argon, but they're maybe your only choice. So to me, to my thinking, it was good to include additional basis sets. Now there are additional basis sets, Karlsruhe basis sets, uh, which are available for argon through krypton. And uh, my idea was to implement it in QEC as an alternative to the Dunning basis sets um, of elements of this uh, mass. So what, what exactly are these uh, basis sets? Well, they, they have a hierarchy similar to the Dunning basis sets. So they're, they're, they're given this prefix DEF2. They originate from the Alrix basis sets, SVP, TTVP, QZVP, which are split valence polarization, triple and quadruple zeta you know, polarization, um, somewhat analogous to the Dunning basis sets, double, triple zeta, et cetera, and the bubble as well. Uh, they can include diffuse functions, so the augmented Dunning basis sets, or the uh, plus, double basis sets with plus names. Um, so there are analogies to be made there. I ran some quick calculations to see how they perform. This is an elastic scattering cross-section for germanium tetrachloride, um, done with uh, the red uh, curve is the Dunning basis set, and the remaining curves are the... Uh, Karlsruhe basis sets, and the shapes of the cross-section in all cases are, there is some sensitivity down here at low energies, and it seems like there's some convergence here between triple and quadruple zeta when you use the Karlsruhe basis sets. Um, well, that's really what's needed to get convergence at these sort of lower energies, and at moderate energies, it's uh, reasonably similar between all of them. Then some rotational excitation cross-sections. Uh, same sort of thing, reasonable agreement in the overall shape. Uh, although at, at the higher end of energies, there's a similarity between the Dunning double zeta base set and the SVP result, and then triple and quadruple zeta are somewhat different. So there's some convergence still um, required there, but overall the shapes of these two transitions, J equals zero to one, zero to two, um, very similar in all cases. Uh, which builds confidence that there's no problem using these basis sets, running them through an R matrix calculation. There are no uh, numerical issues come up. Everything looks looks fine in this this sort of case. Other sort of fundamental information that you can get out of uh, calculations are vibrational frequencies, which are necessary for vibrational excitation calculations. And the good thing with this is that you can compare it to NIST data. So these are vibrational frequencies calculated by uh, QEC with different uh, uh, basis sets, Dunning and Karlsruhe, and there's a similar level of agreement, maybe one to two percent agreement um, with uh, a couple of these values. This one's a bit of an outlier, maybe four or five percent in all cases, but uh, it's somewhat similar. Level of agreement, I would say, between these two uh, is very similar. So to conclude, um, rates and cross-sections can now be calculated in Quirk for any isotope that the user chooses. And calculations can be carried out uh, if you have elements between argon and krypton. They can be performed using Karlsruhe basis sets. And what I'll try to do now is demonstrate how this is actually done in Quick. So this is coming up. So this is the actual Quick GUI interface. Um, 
This is a titanium tetrachloride molecule, which I've preloaded. At the start of a quick calculation, you enter all of these Cartesian coordinates, which you can get from the NIST database um, for all of the atoms that you, you, you choose. So I set up titanium tetrachloride. And say for this example, uh, I want to use isotopes. There's an isotope uh, button here. So we can open this. This will bring up a dialog box which allows you to select the isotope of your choice. So what I'm going to do is for chlorine, well, 37 is reasonable um, abundance. So I'm going to take chlorine for a couple of them, say, and change it from 35 to 37. Okay, with that. Uh, and then going to center it. It assumes that the origin is the center of mass. So I need to recenter and then uh, continue. So that's the actual setup of the molecule. It will determine the point group using MOLPRO. That was the next step. It identifies it as C2V. And then this page is where we set up the MOLPRO options. So for the sake of time, I'm going to do a Hartree-Fock calculation with Hartree-Fock uh, orbitals. And uh, this is where we select the basis set. So by default, it's Dunning double zeta, but I'm going to choose one of the new basis sets and choose this. Smallest one for the sake of time. And uh, this will then calculate target properties, including charge density. This then is set up, and we move on to then to the R matrix setup. So this is our actually our inner region on the left, target molecule within it. Uh, the R matrix sphere is 10 atomic units. That's probably fine for this case. I might take it slightly larger, but 10 will do for now. Um, the uh, method, the sort of level of detail in the wave function, I'm going to take a static exchange, which is effectively Hartree Fock for the target plus uh, the scattering electron in a virtual orbital. And then this is the energy grid on which the cross sections ultimately will be uh, printed, which is uh, reasonable for most cases. Then this screen allows you to select what cross sections you want to calculate. There are a set of standard R matrix calculations, which involves the uh, elastic scattering cross section, the eigenphases. You can calculate excited states if you uh, wish with a you require close coupling calculation for that, which is uh, somewhat more time consuming than the one I'm going to do and ionization. You can also calculate differential momentum, rotational and vibrational excitation calculations and the dissociative attachment. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it with just ionization and the total cross-section. So then this is the output screen, uh, which will get your calculation log. So this will print various pieces of information about the calculation as it proceeds. And the first long list of numbers that it prints out here is the set of orbitals. So it's a fairly long list. And it'll get longer as the base set gets bigger. Um, but uh, it will print this out. This is somewhat useful uh, if you're doing an active space calculation. So you've got the orbitals with the occupation, symmetry, and energy. In this case, we've got what, 45 doubly occupied orbitals. Titanium tetrachloride should be 90 electrons. So these are all doubly occupied. The symmetry, one through four for C2V, and the energy. If you're running uh, an active space calculation where you have uh, some orbitals which are not constrained to be doubly occupied, this can be quite useful information to tell you whether you've got uh, where the population is. And so you can either um, increase or decrease the size of your active space, depending on the occupations that are printed here. So this will give a long list and gives you an idea of the size of the basis you're using. So the initial part of this is the target calculation. Uh, mostly what it's doing at this stage is spending time in a program called SCATCI integrals, which uh, calculates two electron integrals for the dielectronic repulsion um, uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, in this case, that is what took the greatest length of time. And it's then going to go through the rest of the target modules. It's then racing through the inner region into the outer region. Right, has a set of symmetries to do, each of which takes a few seconds. There are handy timing printouts for all of these. Uh, 
And finally, it produces the uh, results, which you can view. It also produces a data sheet with the main information. So that is a, a, a quick calculation carried out with both isotopes and new basis sets um, as a quick demonstration of uh, uh, the new capabilities in Quick. So that that concludes my my talk. <laughs>